What is up, Maniacs? Welcome to Broadened Horizon. I'm your host, as always, Drake Riggs, here to bring you episode 41. This installment of the show features two great guests, starting off with the big boss himself, Ryzen founder Nobuyuki Sakikabara. We discussed everything Super Ryzen 3 and got some updates on champions and former champions, Chihiro Suzuki and Kai Asakura. You won't want to miss it. After Saki Gabara, the voice, Michael Chavello made his Broad and Horizon debut before also making his Ryzen debut alongside his fellow Aussie, Damian Brown, live in person for commentary at this weekend's event. Thanks, as always, to our great guests for stopping in, and thanks to everyone who supports the show. Whether you've been watching on MMA.com, YouTube, or listening on Spotify, thanks as always, and don't forget to hit like and share if you enjoy. Kicking things off, it's the man himself, Nobuyuki Saki Kabara. All right, Saki Gabara san, it is great to see you again. Uh, it's been a while since San Diego, man. I just hope you're doing well. Happy Super Ryzen 3 Fight Week. How are you, sir? It is great to see you again. Uh, we are fine. Thank you. Pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, very excited for the event coming up. A big one, like what you guys always do in the summertime. So this will be fun. Um, I guess just uh, let's. I want to get your general thoughts on how the event came together. You know, shaping it up to be what it is now. We got some bare knuckle fights on here. We got the big main event. Uh, of course, Manny Pacquiao's debut. There's a lot going on with this event. So how excited are you for it? What kind of inspired you to form what we have now uh, with this big uh, big Super Ryzen 3 overall? じゃあ、まずあのスーパーレイジングのファイトウィークがま、近づいてきて、ま、とんでもないスーパーなイベントになってきてると思うんですが、ベアナックルがあり、メインイベントが素晴らしいメインイベントがあり、マニーパッキャ
you know, Asakura is definitely the, the, the key figure that has led that has led Ryzen's success in Japan and which has solidified Ryzen's branding in Japan. So for all, any fan who's been following Ryzen, this is this matchup, it cannot get better any better than this. Because these are two superstars that were born from Ryzen's history. And there's a solid story and narrative behind it. So, you know, I think this main event is a must-see if you're a Ryzen fan. And on top of that, you have Manny Pacquiao, that legend, who is fighting at, for the undercard of this main event. I think the legend Manny Pacquiao is fighting before somebody else. <laughs> and this lineup is, is something that no other prom promoter can put together. This is strictly something that only we can do. You know, the UFC can put something together, but they won't be able to put this kind of a lineup together. You know, so so for us to, to get recognition, you know, by, by the U.S. fans, it's important to have these kind of fights. And I think we, uh, you know, this event has completely, uh, it showed what kind of cards that we need to get interest, to draw interest globally. Obviously, we have Manny Pacquiao for, you know, for the global market. And then by having BKFC, Bare Knuckle Fights, you know, we understand that the popularity of BKFC is growing in the stateside significantly, North America. So, you know, by having these BKFC fights, we believe that we can give a little more uh, attention for the U.S. audience and something else for them to to gain interest into our show. So with all that said, I do believe that this Super Ryzen is something that only we can do. And we're very confident and uh, we can't wait to, to see the fight. Couldn't agree more, sir, and I'm uh, very excited to kind of dissect kind of the bits and pieces of it with you here. But we'll start off at the top. Of course, kind of the big thing you announced, uh, what, this past week was the rule changes and kind of the scoring, the extra rounds for the main event, Ren Hiromoto and uh, Mikuru with the five rounds and then what the, the unified rules. I'm just curious, you know, from your perspective, what came into this decision? Can we expect to see more of this in Ryzen, or is it going to be a one one and done for their fight? Just tell me what kind of went into uh, making these changes for this fight specifically. あの、社長に今聞きたいことはですね、あの先日発表されたメインイベントのルール特別 ただ、ライジンの中でいう 僕らはプロモーターからすると あの、あの、
、だからその中で今回は、えー、初めて5分5ラウンドという枠まで、あのー、この試合のために設定をしてでこれをそれでも決着をつけていかなくちゃいけないんでトータルマストで5ラウンド見るっていうのはさすがに難しいんでであれば完全決着をつける上でよりタイトに1ラウンドごとでジャッジメントを取って、えー、判定の中でも両選手のファンがとてつもない数いるんでそこになんか疑惑の判定というような形で後から後ろ指を刺されないような厳格なものにする上で今回のこの試合を実現させるために、えー、一期一会でこのルールをあの採用したっていうのがあの本音です。So, this, the, 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 the reasoning on how this all came together was that this is not a fight that determines the best of any division or weight class. You know, this, this exceeds the sport. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not for a title, but these are, without a doubt, the two icons of, of Ryzen, of our brand. And two, when these two icons are fighting each other, and this is not for the division belt, like it exceeds the sport. So, from my, from my point of view, you know, th this fight, the meaning of this fight is much heavier than any title fight. So, that, that's how I feel, you know. So, my, in, in an ideal world, I didn't want this fight to have any judges, I wanted the fighters to determine the outcome. So, there's absolutely no,、uh, no controversy. We want to make sure that there's a clear winner and there's a clear loser. So, my honest opinion is that we didn't, I didn't want any judges. The ideal rule set was the Sakuraba versus Hoist Gracie. Endless rules until someone gives up. H hence, last man standing, right? This is what we want to determine. We want to determine which, which fighter is going to go in there and be the last man standing. So that was the whole approach and idea that we wanted to put in and in, in, in put into this fight. But, you know, however, we, we talked to both, and both fighters agreed. They understand. They don't want this fight to be the outcome to be determined by judges. They know that they will have to be the one that, 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 that can clearly win the fight. But when you look at reality, it's summer break. We're going to have a lot of kids here, and we can't really put on an event. Where we don't know when it's g o i n g to end. Obviously, they're g o i n g to have to, a lot of people are traveling, they have to coordinate their travel plans and everything. You know, there's so much that will affect everybody if we decide to go with the unlimited amount of rules, you know. So that wasn't realistic in a way. So we had to come down to reality, and we, when we felt that, you know, the concept, everybody understands the concept, but we believe that maybe we will need more than three rounds. So we're g o i n g to do five rounds. But It comes down to when we do five rounds, it's going to be very, very hard for the judges to determine the fight in a total must r o u n d the judging system when it's five rounds. It's, there's so much to, to cover, and it's not realistic doing the, the, the total must system. So we utilize these rule sets where each round will be judged so that in case it goes to the decision, we will have a clear winner. So these rule sets. Were, were implemented strictly for this one night, for this night, for this fight. So that's how it all came together. And the answer is this, is, this rule is set is just for one night. All right. Very fascinating. And、uh, well, now I got to ask you, Saki Gubara, do you think you'll ever do a fight with、uh, no rounds? Because that's very old school. <laughs> Sounds very fun. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I'm going 無制限ラウンドっていうものはいずれやってみたいと思いますでしょうかやってみたいですね。あの、本当にもう、あの、ルール、僕はユニファイドのルール、ユニファイドのルールっていうけど、まだこのスポーツが1993年の UFC のスタートをに旗を立てたとしたって30年しか経ってないんですよ、はい。一つのルールに固定するべきじゃないと思ってるんで、いろんなチャレンジをもっとするべきで、ここまでの30年の歴史の中でプライドの頃にはいろんなチャレンジがあったんです、ルールで。でそれはサッカーボールキックを当初は認めてなかったものを認めたり
、ラウンドも10分、5分、5分でやってみたり、あのー、無制限でやってた試合も他にもあるんですね、桜庭ホイッスン戦が初めてではなくて、佐野とホイラー・グレイシーがやった試合とかも無制限で、1本無制限ラウンドでやってるからね。うん、だから、あのー、僕は今のところにルールが。固定しちゃうと、僕はこの競技がの進化が止まると思ってるんで、だから今、オリンピックだけど、オリンピックの柔道だって、レスリングだって、毎回ルールが変わるんですよ。だからそうすることによって、選手がまたそのルールにアジャストするために、オフェンスもディフェンスもいろんなことを考えて、クリエイティブなことが生まれるんです。だから、この先で言えば、無制限ラウンドもそうだし、もっと違った形での、MMA というカテゴリーの中でのルールチェンジは、あの、あえてしたいと思ってます。Yeah, I would,、uh, to answer your question, I definitely want to try something like that. I mean, it's tempting, you know, and, and、uh, my belief is that the unified rule sets, everybody, you know, is a big believer of the unified rule sets. But when you think about this sport, let's say we say、uh, MMA was started in 1993, the UFC first event, 1993. When you set that, it's still only been 30 years. It's a, it's a new sport. And for such a new sport to already be saying that these are the rule sets, is, I think it's, it's not necessary at this point yet. We need to continue to keep challenging and pushing ourselves in order for this sport to, to evolve. Like back in the Pride days, we did a lot of experiments. We challenged, we did a lot of challenges. You know,、um, back then, we didn't approve soccer ball kicks, and we tried to approve them. And we've done a lot of things and we've kept a lot of things. We got rid of a lot of things. But, you know, we've had 10 five, five minute rounds, you know, like 10 minute, five minute, five minutes. You know, it wasn't all three five minute rounds. We've done all sorts of stuff before.、Um, the unlimited time rule set, Sakuraba versus Hoist, it wasn't the first time. We've done a fight where it was an unlimited time,、uh, no,、uh, just fight. Until there's a finish. And this was be done between Sano and Hoyler Gracie. Now, we've done these stuff, stuff before. And I think the moment we stop thinking about adjusting the rules, that's when the sport stops evolving.、Mm. I think, like, we have the Paris Olympics this weekend, or it, it begins this week. And when you look at those sports, even judo, even wrestling, all those sports are constantly changing their rule sets. Evolving and the athletes have to adjust to those rule sets. And that's where all the creativity, creativity comes in, new moves. And this is how the sport evolves. So I think well, the moment you stop thinking about trying to make things better, that's when the evolution of the sport stops right there. So my goal is to, in terms of the MMA category wise, I want to continue on new challenges. I want to continue to. To set new bars. And I want to try new things out because right now the unified MMA rule set, it, it is, it, it's not the, the, the final destination. Yeah, very well said and always innovating, Saki Kabar. And we see that with events like Super Ryzen 3 and you know, bringing in Manny Pacquiao, which I want to ask you kind of about his involvement, of course, since it's something we've been expecting for a long time. But first, I got to ask you you know, this was supposed to be Manny Pacquiao versus、uh, Chihiro Suzuki, but Chihiro got injured, got taken out. So, first, I just got to get a health update from you. How was the champ doing? How was、uh, his hand, right? Was what he injured? I don't know. 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 状況はいかがでしょうか、うんまあ、あの6月の、えー、後半にあのゴミ高則と、まあ、ボクシングでの試合をボクシングのルールでの試合をしたんですけど、まあ、実際はその試合の前からあの千尋は拳を痛めてましたで、えーまあ、本人はゴミ選手の、まあ、引退に向けての試合に花を添えるってことでその試合は受けてまあ彼の中のプライオリティとしてはそんな高くなかった試合ですどちらかというともう完全にパッキャオにロックオンしてあの7月28日にあの世界のレジェンドとまあライジンのフェザーキのチャンピオンが戦うでもう千尋からするとこんな千載一遇のビッグネームと
戦える機会は世界に自分が出ていくためにはこんなチャンスはないってことで舞い上がってたんだけど残念ながらゴミの,あの試合の1ラウンドでその痛めてた拳をさらに痛めて2箇所拳を骨折するあのそんなに彼の中ではプライオリティの高い試合じゃなかった試合で怪我を負ってしまうというあのことに結果になってしまいました。で現状はその骨折した拳の怪我を治療するために、えー、トレーニングは当然できてなくて、えー、今は治療に専念しているという状態で本人からすると、まあ、落ち込みようがひどくてゴミの試合が終わった時も周りには大丈夫全く怪我がないって言ってこっそり1人で病院に行ってなんとかパッキャオの試合に出れるようにその怪我をあの内緒にしてねあのパンケの試合に臨もうとすらじたばたしたぐらいあの本人はショックを受けてようやく立ち直ってあの来て7月28日も会場にあの顔を見せることになると思いますけどもまあ本当にあの残念な彼にとっては残念な結果になりました。Yeah, so first of all, let me explain how this all happened.、Um, you know, obviously, we all know that he fought at the end of June, he fought、uh, Takanori Gomi in under boxing rules.、Um, so he went into that fight、uh, with, a, with, with a slightly injured fist, but you know, he wanted to, to be a good, good sport and、uh, you know, have it was, go- was going to be Gomi's last fight, you know, so he wanted to honor that. So he, he went in there. His priority was July 28th, Pacquiao, for sure. So, you know, it, it's a weird way to put it, but the Gomi fight was not a priority. Like, he wanted to be a nice, nice sport and, and do this fight and then head on to the Pacquiao、uh, fight. Because obviously, it was, it's a great opportunity. You don't really get to face the legends too many times. It's a great opportunity to showcase your skills to the world, to the legends. So, you know, it was a great opportunity, and he was definitely looking forward to that. However, in the first, in, in the first round, You know, he re injured his injury and broke his fist in two places. So, you know, it, the fact is, as a result, what happened is he got injured in a, in a fight that wasn't top priority for him. It was very unfortunate for him. So he was, de- he was devastated, you know, he's devastated right now.、Um, he was in a very, he was very disappointed and devastated. He was at a point where he didn't tell anybody about his broken fist. He went to the doctor by himself, tried to keep all the information away so he could still fight in July. So that's how desperate he was. That's how much he wanted this fight. But unfortunately, you know, it got out and he can't fight anymore. So he's been depressed. He's been very upset. But finally, you know, he's got everything settled.、Um, he's in a good state of mind right now and he's going to be showing up、uh, to the Super Ryzen event. But, you know, that's how it all started and that's where he's at right now. He's, he's just focusing on healing up right now. He's not training, but he's just focusing on getting better. All right, that's good to hear. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate situation. And、uh, I know he was looking forward to that. So and maybe, hopefully, so it can still be put together at some point. But first, we got Manny Pacquiao's fight versus、uh, Anpo to look forward to, Sakibara. So, just from the perspective you know, of you get, being here in this spot, putting on this event, getting these names over Ryzen's existence, like Floyd, like Manny. And we're almost to that 10 year mark, right? With the Ryzen's 10 year anniversary, which is super cool and awesome. Next year, I'm sure, going to be a lot of big, exciting plans. But for you, how much of a testament would you say it is to, you know, just, I guess, the pride of being able to make these kind of things happen in the existence and kind of show your success visually when you get guys like Manny Pacquiao? Just how much of a. How much of an accomplishment, I guess, is that for you to be able to have put on these kind of events and get these names like Manny through、uh, Ryzen's history、uh, before the 10 year mark? I think that's a good thing. 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 前の段階でもうすでにこうやってパッキャオとかこの世界レベルのスーパースターたちを呼んで、えー、自分のイベントに呼んで、えー、大会を行うとそういうことができている実現できているっていうことに対してのこの自負だったりこうプロモーターとして
実際にこういうことができているぞっていう、その実力を世間に見せることっていう部分は、社長にとってなんかそうモチベーションだったり、それに対してどういうふうなご自身は思われていますでしょうか。まあ、あの自分のなんかあの評判とか自分自身のまあエゴなのか自分自身をこれで俺はすごいだろうっていう気は全くないんだよね。だからこれも本当にファンが何を求めているかそれとライジンというまああの9年目を迎えたこのプロモーションまあ僕はこれ常にプライドの時もそうなんだけど本当に生命体だと思ってるんでこのプラ,イプライドの時代もそうだけどライジンがこの先どこに向かってどう成長していきたいかっていうこの生命体が求める成長の軌跡にをこうイメージした時にフロイドとかパッキャオとか彼らがライジンの今のこのタイミングでは世界というマーケットに出ていくその中でユニークで本当唯一無二なプロモーションになるためには必要なピースだと思ってあのマッチアップしてるし彼らとも交渉してるし彼らもそういう意思をというか意向我々のビジョンを理解してチャレンジしてきてくれるてるんだと思いますだからこれは本当にライジンの未来に向けた成長僕自身が代表としてプロモーターとしてあと何年やるのかわからないけども次の世代に変わったとしてもやっぱりその歴史が,があってまあ未来があるわけでまああのそういうタイミングなんだなと思ってますだからこれをまあ僕がなんか自分の自己主張のために無理してパッケをピックアップしてるわけでもメウザーをピックアップしてるわけでもなくてライジンというあのプロモーションの成長の軌跡の中でファンとか未来を少し見据えた先を読んだ時にこれが必ず生きてくるという必要とされてこのカードが実現されてきてるんだと思ってます。そうと言われてみれば、私は自分のプレゼンス、自分のプレゼンス、自分のプレゼンス、自分のプレゼンス、自分のプレゼンス、Um, but for where I put Ryzen is what the fans want and where Ryzen is headed. Like, this is from the Pride Days. I've been continuing to say this, and say this from the Pride Days, but these, these events, once it starts to take off, it, 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 has its own, it has its own identity. It's its own living or- organism, if you understand what I'm saying. Like, I can't control it. So, It's all about the timing and the demand, what the fans want to see. When you think about the future, there's always, you know, when you think about the future, there needs to be a history in order for the future to exist. So I believe that by doing all this in the right timing, so basically, you know, he was saying that once an event takes off, it, it becomes its own living organ- organism and it's hard to control. But what we can do is by Listening to the demand, looking at the market and see what the demand is, it's all about the timing and setting these tools. And, and once you get, once you do it, the fact that you've already done it once will, will definitely benefit people in the future. So, my thing is that, you know, I'm looking for the growth of Ryzen. And I, I myself don't know how many years I can be a promoter. I'm not sure how many years I can continue. But whatever I accomplish here will be passed on to the next generation. And I think the fact that we've worked with Pacquiao for this event, that fact that we've worked with Floyd Mayweather, these facts will, without a doubt, help the future of Ryzen. And whoever is running Ryzen, It will mean something at, at that time. So I'm not doing all this just for my ego and say, hey, look what I can do. I have worked at Floyd, I worked at Pacquiao. That's not the case. I am just reaching out to, I'm, I'm delivering what the market wants me to deliver. And I believe that will be the future for Ryzen and the sport. All right. Yeah. 
Very well said, and I love that answer, Sakibara-san. Great timing with the comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to keep you too much longer here, Sakibara-san, so I'll just uh, I'll leave you with a couple more questions here. Appreciate your time oh so much, sir. But um, in terms of other big news that happened, other superstars, you know, of course, Mikuru Asakura is on the top of uh, this card here. But uh, his brother recently was in the news, of course, as you announced at the last event that uh, Kai, the Bantamweight champ, will be moving on to the UFC. And we're uh, excited to see what he can do over there. But I just got to ask you, like, how did this uh, all happen with Kai? Um, and how do you think he'll do in the UFC? Just tell me the story of how uh, he's been, you know, he's, he's going to the UFC now. ま、当然、ケイとしてはあの、9年間のライジンの ラストチャレンジで一度、ま、現状で言えば彼の彼まあ、ここは大きな心で気持ちで本当に会が嬉しい。大きな思いで、親父のような気持ちで送り出すことを決めた。you know, and uh, after you become champion, you know, Kai's, you know, Kai's, uh, he's 30 years old. You know, he's in his 30s now. And, you know, he's only fought in Ryzen. Obviously, he's fought for uh, Road FC. He's fought for the Outsider. But, you know, his past few years and what, what made Kai who he is today, he only knows Ryzen. So once, you know, once a fighter accomplishes something, 
they don't become satisfied. The fighters continue to want to challenge themselves. They want to know where they stand globally, right? So, um, that's Kai wasn't satisfied with just being the rising rising champion. He wanted to continue to push himself. He wanted to continue to challenge himself to, to confirm where he's at globally. So, obviously, you know, we all understand that you know the UFC right now has definitely has the top uh, the top athletes, right? They they have positioned themselves to where they have a lot of the world's top talent that we, we we can't provide so you know he wanted to go out there and represent ryzen to see where the ryzen champion what can do uh, against other world class a- class athletes you know he told me this year and i guess that the thought of him trying to challenge and test himself has gotten bigger and bigger and that's when he started to ask us uh starting this year so he confessed to me and said, hey, boss, this is what I want to do. This is how I feel. Obviously, from our point of view, uh, Mikura Asakura, Kai Asakura, these both are they are very important. They are our key figures for our event. And it's, impo- it's, it's normal for us to think that we don't want to give them away to anybody else. We want to keep them. We want to continue to grow with them. We want to keep them and continue to grow with them. But I also understand him as a fighter and as a man who wants to continue to push himself, who wants to challenge himself. The time is running out. I understand all that. So, you know, like, I know that as a promoter, maybe I should have locked him up in the contract and say, hey, you have obligations. But I just couldn't do that. You know, so I think when you, when on the flip side of it, I think by sending out Kai as, as you know, he's going to proudly represent Japan and Ryzen. And if he does well, it's good for us as well, you know. So, and I actually personally want to see him beat Sean O'Malley. I want to see him fight Sean O'Malley and see how, what's going to happen, you know? So for me, it was a tough call, but I decided to, you know, have this father-like mentality to send him out, out into the open, big, big waters and see what he can do. So that's, you know, that's where my mindset was at. You know, I traveled to, I met up with Dana in February. We talked about things. We brought up some ideas. And uh, you know, after all, after after all that, here we are. All right. Well, respect to you for that thought for sure, Sakibar. It's very similar to the Yuri situation, and we see how that worked out for him, became a champ. So we'll see if the same thing can happen for Kai. But. So much that we could always talk talk about, Saki Gabara. I know you're a very busy man, so uh, I'll let you go on that note, my man. I appreciate you oh so, so much, especially during this fight week and all that. Very excited for the card, as always. And I just always appreciate you taking the time for me. Uh, it really does mean a lot, and uh, I just wish you all the best. As always, hope it's a good, successful, smooth-flowing rest of the week and events, sir. But uh, just thank you so much for taking the time. A big arigato gozaimashita. Okay, thank you very much. And welcome to the show, as well as Ryzen, the voice, Michael Chavello. All right, awesome, man. So, yeah, I mean, uh, when, when are you headed to Tokyo then? I'm sure it uh, got to be a couple of days, I right? Head, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning. Okay, all right, I'm catching you just in time yeah. then. <laughs> yeah, just in time. <laughs> all right, so, I mean, tell me about how this all came to be, Michael. Seeing you with Ryzen is like a really awesome combination. Of course, the fans love seeing you in Japan and all that in general, but with Ryzen, uh, I guess when did it when they first come to you? Just tell me the backstory of how we got to this point, man. Yeah, it was a few weeks ago. Actually, I was in Japan doing the the K1 Max Finals. Uh, what was it? Two, three weeks ago, and uh, got a message from Ryzen. They reached out saying they were expanding their international market, uh, international pay per view market, and wanted to bring me on board to to commentate. And uh, I jumped at the opportunity. Ryzen is a, a great brand. I've been a fan of theirs for many years. I see them as the successor to Pride and, and Dream, which is a one. I'm sure most fans see them too. Uh, You know, we'll never have pride again and the beauty and gloriousness that was pride. But uh, Ryzen has sort of picked up um, that big hole in our hearts and tried to fill it over the years with super exciting events. And uh, so, you know, as soon as they came to me and said, do you want to jump on Super Ryzen 3? I was like, yep, let's do it. And uh, that's how I got locked in. All right, right on. Yeah, congrats on the opportunity, man. And I assume that you were also uh, familiar with Damien already, so it's probably cool to get to work with him, right? It is. You know what? I've known about Damien for a long time. I've never met Damien before, and I've never worked with Damien before. But, you know, I obviously knew him as 
myself watching Ryzen over the years and him being a long-time commentator of Ryzen with various partners over the years and him being a, a star of Australian mixed martial arts, of course, and one of our UFC stars and, you know, the, the reputation precedes him. So I'm really looking forward to being there in person. And I want to stress that to people as um, a lot of people were asking since it got announced on social media, uh, will Chevello be there in person right. or is it going to be done, you know, via remote commentary? Because I know in the past that, Ryzen have done a lot of remote commentary that hasn't sat particularly well with fans. Yes, we will be there ringside. I'm flying to Tokyo tomorrow. I will be there Sunday afternoon at Saitama Super Arena. They're saying there's going to be 50 to 52,000 people there now, which is crazy. Uh, I'm super excited. It's been a long time since I've commentated at Saitama Super Arena. It may have been, man, maybe Dynamite back in 2000. 11, I'm wow, thinking. Wow, okay. May have been the last one. So, yeah, it's been around 13, 12, 13 years. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And even back then, I think the biggest one we ever got for Dynamite was New Year's Eve 2009. I think we put 45,000 in there. So, I believe that Super Ryzen 3 is looking at getting even more than yeah. that. It's, it's going to be astronomical. Yeah, for sure, man. Very excited for it. It's kind of a full circle moment in that regard then, right? With all the time there. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Do you do you ever think about that stuff and sit back and be like, oh, that was that memory and tie things together that way? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Just recently I found some old Dream clips on uh, YouTube and some full shows of Dream, you know, full four or five hour shows. And uh, I was flicking through one a couple of nights ago. And it was, wasn't actually Dream. It was an old Sengoku mm. I think it was an old Sengoku show, a New Year's Eve show we called Genki Death. I think it was after the uh, the Japanese earthquakes uh, had happened. We did a special New Year's Eve show that had Antonio Inoki mm. on the show. There was pro wrestling. Josh Barnett wrestled on it. Peter Ertz wrestled on it. Jerome Labana was there. Uh, uh, Tim Sylvia was there, all pro wrestling as well. And uh, that was when Fedor fought Satoshi Ishii right. in the main event. And I was like, man, I have not watched this in over a decade. And just to watch it with me commentating with Mike Kogan and Hans Thompson and, you know, the, the pomp and the pageantry and the over-the-topness. Uh, like I said, it was a couple of days ago and it got me even more excited to to be at Super Ryzen 3 this weekend. Yeah, I can totally understand that, man. And I, I'm curious from kind of that uh, commentator perspective, Michael, like you've had so many, you know, dance partners, if you will, partners uh, in crime uh, for, for over these years and mentioned Damien right there. For you, I'm curious kind of what the mentality is when you go into working with somebody new for the first time. Like, are there certain things you look for or expect in terms of needing to kind of find that meshing point, if you know what I mean? Or do you think you, obviously all the years you've had, you can work with anybody and how it find the flow eventually, but what are kind of some keys, I guess, or things you try and hit on, I guess, with someone new for the first time? Yeah, so whether I'm working with, you know, Guy Mezger or Pat Militich, Frank Trigg, Jason Mayhem Miller, Bus Rutten, uh, Frank Barker, uh, you know, Mike Kogan, whoever has been throughout the years, and there have been many people that um, I've been um, saddled up with. Uh, I always like to sit down with a, a new co commentator and, and mention a few uh, tips or guidelines, I suppose you could say. Um, my first one is that I know that in commentary, I bring a lot of energy. And I always say to my co-commentator, I need energy from you, but don't try to match my energy. Right. Because if you try to match my energy, you won't be able to. I want your natural energy. Don't try and be a Chevello. Be a Trig. Be a Mayhem. Be a Militich. Be a Mezga. Don't be a Chevello. Be you. And let's have your energy come through. So don't try and go, you know, try and keep your energy up with mine but bring your energy up to another one or two levels but don't try and match mine because i've had people that have tried to match mine in the past thinking they're doing the right thing by doing that and it just it sounds it sounds terrible you know so that's one thing i like to say to, to new commentators i work with the other one is um and what i'm very careful of in all sports i commentate and all commentators are is let's not talk over one each other mm. you know let's give each other due time I'll bring you in and out. Let me quarterback it as the play-by-play -play guy, as the host, as the main commentator. I'll quarterback the whole broadcast. I'll bring you in and out. You know, I'll give you a tap on the leg. I'll give you a nudge. I'll give you a wave. I'll give you a gesture. I'll lead into you. I'll ask you questions. I'll give you plenty of time to get in, to get out. 
and let's keep it nice and neat because there's nothing worse than when commentators are fumbling over their words, trying to beat each other to the punch, talking over each other, and it just becomes a stumbling, bumbling mess. So, you know, there's a couple of points there that I like to give new commentators. Um, I feel like I've managed to get along well with everybody in my career so far. Um, some have had wonderful chemistry. I mean, myself and Mayhem had awesome chemistry. Pat Militich and I had great chemistry. Uh, Bas Root and I had great chemistry as well. Um, there's some you just, you know, you naturally gel with. Some take a little bit more work, a little bit more time, and it's a partnership, yeah. you know, like in anything. So you've got to, you're, you have to have a level of trust as well. And I guess it's like working a pro wrestling match. Mm. You know, you've got to trust your partner when they're picking you up and slamming you and, and, and pile driving you and, and, and giving you the bumps. You've got to trust them to sell it with you. It's the same in commentary. You've got to trust your partner, um, you know, to, to bring you in and out and to compliment you and not be adversarial towards you at any stage. So it, it's all part of, you know, developing that chemistry. And sometimes it's got to be done very quickly. Um but often it's it's fun, you know, d- developing that chemistry and, and and finding that that formula, that potion that really works and creates the magic. Yeah, got to get that balance, pros, pro man. And I think uh, your energy is going to be just fitting for a, a Ryzen event, and especially a one of Super Ryzen three's caliber. So, like, I mean, how cool is it for you to start with this one, right? Like, big show, big big stadium, like you said, and all this full circle moment, like from for the event, top to bottom. I'm sure you've went through it, combed through it uh, plenty of times now. I mean, just how exciting is it for you f- with this thing as a whole here? Now, I feel really privileged to be asked by Rise to, you know, commentate on their biggest events ever. It's a, it's a huge privilege, a huge honor, and something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've always wondered, hey, you know, get my voice on Rise I think Rise deserves to have the passion and, you know, the, 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 the energy I bring to it and the, the knowledge I bring to it as well. There are so many good strikers in Rise as well. We're seeing so many former K1 champions on this weekend. Why not bring the voice of K1 in there as well to add that element to it, that element of knowledge and that element of enthusiasm that um, a lot of mixed martial arts commentators that just do mixed martial arts don't really know how to commentate the striking uh you know typically so i like to bring that element as well the fact that we've got many pacquiao boxing on it and you know I, it's 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 uh it's weird because some of the marketing i've seen from from different pay-per-view platforms have been a bit strange there's one here in australia called main event which is on foxtel which is mm-hmm. our biggest pay-per-view platform but I saw on a little thing they did on social media yesterday saying uh, Manny Pacquiao will fight in an exhibition boxing match um, on, on Ryzen against K1 champion Ampo. And I'm like, oh, okay, exhibition boxing match, it ain't going to be any exhibition. I mean, these two guys, exhibition traditionally means you can't knock the other guy out. Right. It means pity pat, dance no, no around. No winners. No winners, declared a draw at the end hit lightly look flashy and that's it it's like a like a uh, a soccer friendly you know nothing really matters who cares if you win or lose it won't go to penalties if there's a draw because who cares doesn't happen at rising <laughs> we've seen it with floyd may with the spikes in rising so far there were knockdowns there were knockouts they were brutal displays now manny pacquiao has some big high price, high ticket pay-per-view boxing matches coming up later in the year. He does not want to lose this. <laughs> he does not want to get knocked down, let alone knocked out in Japan to a kickboxer. So there's actually a lot at stake here. It's going to be three rounds of crazy action. It's very rare the Japanese have seen many Pacquiao fight before. I think Pacquiao fought once at Kraken Hall, maybe back in like 2009, yep. if I if I remember. You know, very small show. So this really is Pacquiao's, you know, big first time in Japan on a big major promotion. Uh, it's, a, it's a summer fighting festival. It's it's going to be massive. Ticket sales have been bonkers. Um, it's exciting. And I'm excited to call Manny Pacquiao as a, as a you know, combat sports commentator. It's bucket list stuff. And as a fight fan, it's got to be bucket list to see one of the all-time great boxers share the ring with a genuine, legit kickboxing, multi-time world champion, a legit recognized K1 world champion. I mean, how cool is that? And this main event, this main event is insane. You know, the thing is, Drake, I've got 
more people asking me about this main event than asking me about the Manny Pacquiao fight. <laughs> and, and in a way, that totally shocked me because I thought that most people would be asking me about Manny Pacquiao, mm -hmm. but most people are asking me about this crudge match. Who's going to win? Is it going to be you know Asakura? Is it going to be Ren? The bad blood between these two. I mean, listen, bad blood, grudge match, it's a term that's thrown around a lot in sports, especially fight sports. Oh, no love lost. Oh, bad blood. Oh, they genuinely don't like each other. Often, Drake, as you know, that's for marketing purposes. Yes. The guys will go backstage afterwards and have a drink and have a laugh together, right? It's for marketing. Not with these two. These two genuinely do not like each other to the point that both are so full of self-belief they've said i will quit i'm gone i'm out of the sport if i lose and these aren't two guys that tail into their careers drake yeah these are two guys i mean ren especially is still rising yes yes right asakura is like towards his peak now mm -hmm. so it's not like they're in the twilight of their careers where if they retire it's like oh well, dude you're going to retire anyway very soon right this is a big call man this is a big call to be on top and say i'll quit i'll retire if i lose so fittingly ryzen have made a strap for it right like ufc did the bmf title ryzen have done the last yep. man standing title first ever five by five minute round fight and they do not want it to go the distance they want the violence they want the aggression. They want the finish. It's geared towards a finish. As uh, Sakakibara said, we want a definite winner, nothing ambiguous. It's going to be nuts. So, oh, man, I'm I'm getting excited just thinking yeah. about it. I've even had a coffee today, and just <laughs> thinking about that main event is like I'm full of 10 coffees and a Red Bull. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I know. It's all we need, man. And that's that's not all with the bad blood because Ashizawa and Koji, they're rekindling their rivalry. That's going to be madness too. There's Man, the other one too. The other one I'm really excited for. And you guys, you've got to check out on YouTube before Sunday, Ryzen Confessions. There's a series of them. These freaking things are good. The best. All right? They go for like 30, 40 minutes. They're all subtitled and dubbed over in English. It gives you the story behind the story. Man, you want to get in the mood? Do a marathon binge session on YouTube after you listen to this podcast with me and Drake. Go on YouTube, type in Ryzen Confessions. Go to episode 155 to start with. I think that's the Pacquiao episode. And then so. float around 155, 56, 57. It's mad. Mm -hmm. You'll spend three or four hours and binge watch them all. But there's this other one. The fight between Ogokubo and uh, Shinru. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, again, another phrase that's thrown around a lot, Drake, teacher versus student. Yes. Right? This is legit, teacher versus student. There's 14 years difference between them. Ogokubo was the teacher of Shinru when Shinru was like uh, yeah, 17, I think he was, or 18. Shinru left the gym because he said that Ogokubo power harassed him by demanding he clean the toilets and clean the floors and do other jobs that are commonplace for like Uchi Deshi, training students, living students and that in Japan. But Shinru didn't want to do them. So he left, he claimed harassment. And now he says, I'm levels better than you. I'm levels better than you, even though you're my instructor. And Ogakubo came out and said, I'm going to teach you young fella a lesson in humility. I'm going to teach you a painful lesson in humility. I'm still levels above you. Man, that is like, that is real life. Johnny Lawrence versus Sensei Chris. That is real life. <laughs> it really is. That, that I can't give you a better analogy. That is Johnny Lawrence versus Sensei Chris. It goes down on Sunday. It's crazy. I can't wait. Oh, I know. It's going to be a great time, man. Getting me hyped as I expected you to, Michael. But uh, uh, you mentioned, you kind of answered this question already for me, but you mentioned uh, Manny Pacquiao being one of those bucket list fighters. And I've heard you talk, you know, in the past about kind of those names that you've thought about, uh, you know, potentially striking off the list to commentate their fights and stuff. And at this point, we'll check off Manny this weekend, but... Do you have any more, man? Because you've commentated practically you know, everybody for the most part at this point. But is there someone still left on the list? <laughs> man, you know what? The funny thing is, cross many off the list. You can cross every kickboxer and Muay Thai fighter off the list because I've done them all from you know, Yod and Buakau. And, and all. I wish I would have done Samar Payakarun, but it was mm. a little before my time. Uh, but I've done all the Muay Thai guys, all the kickboxing guys. I've commentated Deontay Wilder in the Olympics. I've commentated Vasil Lomachenko in the Olympics when he won gold. Um, you know, uh, 
I think Tyson Fury is one I'd really like to commentate. I'm a big fan of Tyson Fury. I met him last year when he came to Melbourne with Joseph Parker. Lovely guy. I'm a massive fan of Furies. I'd love to commentate uh, Tyson Fury one day. Um, he would probably be top of the bucket list for me, I guess. Um, I'd love to commentate uh, some of the UFC guys one day as well. I think I'd like to bring my energy and my passion uh, to some UFC fights and uh, really, um, you know, bring that bring people just jumping out of the seats and you know goosebumps bristling on the arms and the hairs on the back of the neck standing on end when they hear me calling ufc one day maybe with joe rogan you know joe did mention last year he'd love to commentate uh muay thai yeah. with mm -hmm. me um you know he, he he talked to eddie bravo about that on his podcast i'd love to commentate anything with joe rogan i think joe and i would be you know golden in anything we commentate together um you ask for bucket lists i think that would be the, the big bucket list for me yeah, that that's one that's always been uh, in mind for a lot of fans over the years. I know that for sure. And uh, in terms of some of the low key though special career moments for you, Michael, I'm kind of curious which ones you have stand out. And I wanted to bring this up to you because I remember using one of your quotes from this fight when I did my big story on Megumi Fuji because you commentated her return to Japan after uh, when she fought Fujino after the Frausto lost, which. You know, I think that's a pretty good Loki special career moment to have um, for you. I think that was the same show I was mentioning earlier. That Ginka Disc show. With I Fatal think it might have been when you said that. I was. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. And you know, I, I enjoy you bringing that up, and I appreciate it because back then we were saying how Megumi Fuji was the best female fighter on the planet bar none. Mm -hmm. And you know, since then we've seen the proliferation of females coming into the UFC, led by Ronda Rousey and the Misha Tate and and all the rest of them that have come through and all fantastic fighters. So a name like Megumi Fuji tends to be forgotten yep. in the annals of history, but you can't forget her. You know, a, a lot of newbies don't even know who she is, but go back, look who she is, because at the time she was the, the baddest of baddest right. females on the planet. So um yeah, I'm I'm glad to have put my voice behind at least one of her fights yeah absolutely uh it was very cool to see and so i mean would there be any others though you got the kind of you think get buried within <laughs> all the others though you know i remember doing daniel cormier's mixed martial arts debut mm. uh that was actually in sydney australia many many years ago when he fought uh what was his name australian boxing wbo world champion big daddy lucas brown okay. and he beat lucas brown back then i remember meeting daniel backstage in the change rooms in sydney and uh knowing nothing about him and him telling us all about his life up until then and his wrestling achievements and and i remember thinking man this is one smart switched on really nice guy i wish him all the very best and then he popped up years later at king of the cage when i was commentating king of the cage on access tv and uh, I forgot who was fighting, and he won that one. And I was like, oh, that's the dude I remember, Daniel Cormier. I commentated him in Sydney. This guy's going places. Lo and behold, he goes on to become one of the all-time greats. You know, I, I think when you can have stories like that, and, and right now in the UFC and over the last few years, especially since Mick Maynard took over as the matchmaker in UFC, we've seen a lot of the old LFA and RFA guys that I used to commentate on Access TV become stars in the UFC. Um, you know, Brian Ortega, Kamaru Us Usman. You know, these were guys who we were commentating, Pat Militich and I, on Access TV, who have gone on to become major stars now in the UFC. And there's, there's many more of them, of course. And it gives me great pleasure that I'm still in communication with a lot of these guys. I see highlight reels of a lot of these guys with my good night, Irene, and my commentary on them. And, and I love that I was a part, an early part of, of many of those careers. Would you say that your love for combat sports is still as strong as ever? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think you could, I don't think you could do this job the way I do it if you didn't have a genuine love yeah. for it. Uh, <laughs> I've never been a commentator in any sport I commentate, and I commentate a lot of various sports, whether it be combat sports, whether it be volleyball, whether it be soccer, whether it be futsal, uh, eight ball pool, whatever it is. I've never just punched my card or dialed in a performance if i'm not passionate about it i find it very hard to commentate on it and i haven't lost one iota of my passion for combat sports the moment i step into that arena on sunday the moment i put on those ryzen headphones for the first time and have that ryzen microphone in front of my mouth for the first time the moment the lights darken 
and I hear Lenny Hart's crazy <laughs> screaming lady voice again for the first time in over a decade working together. The butterflies will flutter in my stomach. The hairs on my arms will stand on end and it'll all just be a huge coursing adrenaline rush through my entire body as it always is, as it was a couple of weeks ago calling K1 Max for the first time again since 2010. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. It really is. It's almost like a drug you get addicted to, mm-hmm. whether it's dopamine or whatever it is that causes it. I don't know what it is, but it, it's an addiction and it's a beautiful addiction. And I'm glad I'm addicted to it. Yes. <laughs> Not a bad one to be addicted to. So I <laughs> love to hear it, man. And with all that in mind, though, Michael, like, I've got to get your thoughts on uh, bare knuckle boxing because we got two, uh, two of those matches on here. Well, have you been uh, keeping up with just that, that whole rise that BKFC has been doing? And what do you think of these matches we got here? You know what? I, I, I like Dodson and he's a powerful, you know, powerful flyweight dude's explosive. And I love that. And, and I think his fighting style coming in as a champion as well, but his fighting style is built for Japanese fans yeah. because it's, 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 it's go out, aim to kill your opponent or go out and you shield. You know, with John Dodson again, he's he, he's like a guy that never dials it in, never just punches his his, his card. You know, he, he goes all out, and and I'm super excited to see that. I'm super excited to call him in a bare knuckle contest. Um, again, another sport I'd love to call more of bare knuckle. I think it's it's totally suited to my style. I think I could bring a lot to bare knuckle boxing. So to get a chance to commentate Dodson uh, in that bare knuckle fight, I, I think is going to be great. Uh, it could be a show stealer. I really think it could be. Every time John sport, it has been. Uh, you know, Sawyer uh, is no slouch. His rising record, eh, what is it? Like three and two, I think it is. Um, but he's won all of them by knockout. You know, so I think between both of them, they've both got 100% finishing rates. So any way you cut the pie on this one, Drake, I don't think it's going to go the distance. Someone's going to get knocked out. I think the ringside officials should have one finger on the phone with uh, a speed dial to the Tokyo hospital for this one, because I guarantee one of these guys is going to be visiting the hospital after this bout on Sunday. Um, again, guys, this is a, it's a martial arts fighting festival. And this is what dynamite used to be back in the day. It was a mixture. You had some kickboxing, you had some boxing, some mixed martial arts and pro wrestling. Ryzen is seeing mixed martial arts, boxing and bare knuckle boxing. It's a, it's a martial arts fest. In the middle of Japanese summer, it, in the afternoon, in front of 50,000 people, live on global pay-per-view. We are going to be there live ringside. It's going to be insane. I encourage everyone. On Sunday afternoon, I think it's early, uh, late night or early morning Sunday in the States or late mm-hmm. night some, Saturday in the States, I should say. Book it. Go to your pay-per-view provider. Go to Abima TV, Ryzen.tv, main event Foxtel in Australia, but check Ryzen.tv worldwide. Book it in. It's, it's going to be nuts. It's just, I can't wait. Oh, yes. Couldn't say it better myself, Michael. So I think that's a good note to wrap up on, man. I don't want to keep you too much longer here. But, of course, I'll leave you with the last words, sir. I appreciate you taking the time oh so much. Uh, if there's any hidden gems you want to point out that we haven't touched on, just things where people can find you, all sorts of whatever you want to get off the chest there, Michael. I'll leave you with the last word, man. I appreciate you. Drake, thank you. I appreciate you, mate. It's been a while coming. I'm finally glad we got to organize this and do this. And thank you so much. I'm a big fan of all your work as well. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate the professionalism. Uh, add me on Twitter, guys, uh, at Chevello Voice. My Twitter got hacked and my Facebook got hacked late I last year. I noticed that. That was not fun. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I had so many thousands of followers on Twitter and they've all disappeared because Elon Musk, your recovery service on Twitter sucks. Not great. Uh, there is no recovery service. And... Um, so too Facebook. There's no recovery service, so I couldn't get those accounts back. So add me again, at Chevello Voice on Twitter, at Chevello Voice on Instagram. Start up to date with everything. I'm on there. And uh, you know what? Uh, super pump for Ryzen. Uh, again, thanks, Drake, for having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll see you all on Sunday for Super Ryzen 3. Again, Ryzen.tv. Check it out. Book the pay-per-view. It is going to be massive.